Wow, I can't believe I have one of the original, well, like real supermodels sat here on my sofa for Luke Baker I, Live. My first time. Welcome, Nancy Donahue. Thank you, Luke. Nice to see you. Where would you like to begin? Would you rather like talk about from where you were born or to where you were discovered? No, well, let's do the discover thing. Well, I was a, a live-in babysitter on Cape Cod, and I would frequent a bar called the Casino by the Sea in Falmouth, Mass, and I was dating uh, the bartender, who it turned out to be a model in New York. He, he modeled for Mademoiselle, and so when he, he would go back in the fall, and um, Mademoiselle always did a college issue. So long story short, I got on a plane to New York, and I, um, did the interview and I got the job out of 200 girls, so. Oh wow, out of 200 girls. 200 girls, I was one of 10. And wow. then I got that cover and then they gave me the contract to do 10 covers. These days you never get contracts, or I don't believe you get contracts for a magazine cover. Was that a different thing back then where you'd get a contract with a magazine? Yes, because it was all Condé Nast. Yeah. So the girls that did Mademoiselle, you couldn't do Glamour. Glamour girls didn't do Mademoiselle. Oh, okay. So, okay. And then you graduated to Self, and then you graduated to Vogue. So that was the way you. Oh, uh, th yeah. th 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 there was a there was a system. Oh, there was a system. Oh, oh, sure. So I was a Mademoiselle girl, so I couldn't do Glamour. Maybe I did one issue of Glamour, but all the Glamour girls, like Kelly Emberg, never did Mademoiselle. Oh no. 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 So when, so, so how, when that all started, you didn't have an agent or anything at that point. It all right, so just, this is a great story. Yeah, so I'm let's hear it. I'm, so I'm, I'm in Patrick DeMarche's studio shooting with Mademoiselle. Um, just come down from Boston and Joey Mills is doing the makeup, DBA is doing the hair. Oh wow, did he? Yeah, no, fabulous. And, um, and so Patrick calls John Casablanca, or Jeanette, who was John's assistant. This girl, because Patrick said, Nancy, do you have a, an agent? I'm like, no, what's that? <laughs> I don't know what that was. And so uh, Patrick calls John right away. He says, this girl has no agent. You better get your butt down here, basically. Wow. So he sends his little person down, and then they wine and dine me at Demarchier restaurant. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then I signed on with John. Lovely. And John had me, Janice, Kelly, Kim, Esme, Iman. Oh wow, so he, had he had the, the girls. He had the top of the top. No way. Yeah, to start and then, yeah. So listen, you've been photographed by some of the most prestigious photographers in the world. Like you're yeah. talking Helmut Newton, Avedon, like uh, Irving Penn. How was it? to work with them. And when you did work with them, I'm sure you had your favorites and maybe some that were yeah. more harder to work with. Yeah. But were you the star? Were they the star? Please. So for guys like Avedon, Penn, Helmut Newton, um, they were the star. Oh, they and, were the star. Uh, they were the star. Um, when you walked into studios like Arthur Elgort, you were kind of the star, but he would really put you through the ringer. So you had to really perform for him. You had to jump. You oh, had you wanted to show. Oh yeah, you had to be that girl. And if you didn't jump, or you weren't elegant enough, or you weren't the ballet dancer type, forget it. I'm oh kidding. really? Oh yeah, no, no, he was tough. But he's, you know what? He was a great teacher, so he taught you a lot. Who was your favorite to work with as a photographer, or someone you were regularly, like you just got on with, well, you went in there, you know what to do, like, um, for them? Well, there are many. Patrick Demarche was wonderful. He was so great to work with. He always made you feel great. He was good. Um, probably one of my favorite, though, was Dennis Peel. He really was amazing. He really got me. Eric Bowman was phenomenal. He did yeah, a lot of, of my Vogue covers for British yeah. Vogue, and um, he got me, and he was very nurturing to me. Lovely, lovely guy. Who was major, but like, was a nightmare to work for, like, where you nightmare were Nightmare like... to work for. Um, well, D Bill King was also a very good friend, but he could be a nightmare to work for. I mean, he made you work hard with the fans going, I'm jumping, jumping, jumping nonstop, jumping, smiling, jumping nonstop. He was crazy cuckoo. I mean, I'm just curious, how hard can it be to do that all day, though? You want to jump it? You want to jump I'm just curious. I always wonder. I always wonder. I always wonder because I look at these girls and I'm like, how hard no, is it? No, it's freaking hard, especially if you don't want to do it. If you're not in the oh, mood. Oh, if you don't want to do it, but you're getting paid. Yeah, but, uh, well, uh, you got paid the other day for a job, right? True. All okay. right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. Doesn't thank matter you. how much money. It's still it's still hard to it's do worked. all that. Right, 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 right. Of course, yeah. of course, of course, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is just like a random question, but I like just to ask, as it is always. How did it feel to be on the cover of a magazine like Vogue, American Vogue? Jo right. Like, I mean, from if it was me, I would love to be on the cover of a magazine. Like every month, I was on a cover. Um, every month. Every month, I was just on like a cover. That. Oh, okay. I didn't know because I never aspired to be a model. I was going to be a secretary. Oh, if you're on covers all the time and you're doing like Vogue and Bazaar and like just uh, just for the world, is there sometimes? Obviously, you were a very recognized face. Right. Is there sometimes when you didn't want to be recognized, where you wanted to be anonymous, where you just didn't want to have to, I don't know, like... Sort of hide away. Well, the thing was, when they see a magazine, you're covered in makeup. And when I went out every night, I had no makeup on. So a lot of times, yeah, they'd see us and stuff, but it was a different, it was a different thing back then. Right. They, 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 I don't know, it wasn't like it is today. So, 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 so at the end of the day, when you finished a job and your hair and your makeup and everything was done, you're looking amazing, you would want to put it up and take the makeup off and go yeah, out. They always did. Same girls today. This is what they all do. Sometimes I do something really amazing, and afterwards, as soon as the job's done, they put it right up. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, they're like, we're done. The job's done. I'm like, all right, okay. So, I know yeah. it was very rare. There were very few girls that went out with their hair and makeup on. It just looks so. It just looked back then that everyone was like done. I splurged on maybe beautiful shoes and maybe a cool like. Uh, a Ralph Lauren. I remember a red, uh, Ralph Lauren red bomber jacket with blue mink fur, and I gave it to a best friend because I was in a different world. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> said, "Here, you want this coat? Well, that looks really nice on you. Here, you take this five thousand dollar coat." Oh my God, really? Oh sure. No, I gave away a lot of things Dude. at night. Yeah. Well, we're gonna get to all that exciting stuff. I can't wait. How was it though to be a young girl, like you're suddenly getting booked for covers of international magazines, you're flying all over the world, you're living out of a suitcase, and not only that, the money that you're bringing in. Was that a lot for you, Nancy? No, it wasn't, it's a ton of money. I mean, as a kid, you know, you think you know everything that's right, right? So my uncle is in finance, and so I said, no, 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 I, I'll take care of my own money. I'm 20 years old, I was making bootload. Right. But I thought I knew it all. But thankfully, a boyfriend that I had at the time, actually my son's father, um, said, no, we're taking some of this money and putting it straight away because I was blowing Smart. through it. Oh, you just going right through it? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, going right through it. But also, at such a young age, I mean, so, sorry, 20 still young. I, I know how the no, business no, is, no. But, but like, when you're on planes and like, you're on your own a lot as well, like even a lot of the models that I work with as a hairdresser, they're always telling me, like, Luke, I'm on my own all the time. I've got friends, but I'm on my own a lot. I'm living off a suitcase. I'm here, there, 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 every day. They're like, it's not all what it's cracked up to be as far right. as that goes, right. like, other than like the gorgeous parts, but there's a right. lot. Yeah, right. like. No, but I remember going to Rome for a bazaar. I mean, they would work us from morning till 10 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. Oh, wow. Oh, no. It was doing the collections in Rome was a lot of work. It was. I heard that we were so exhausted. Really? Oh yeah, no, it was unbelievable. But the funny thing was flying to Paris, and then I remember one time I was there for Vogue and we got in a row with somebody. Some, my boyfriend maybe attacked another model. I had to get out of Dodge. So uh, I called up and booked the Concord. Boom, okay, I Oh, you just go. booked the Concord oh, no, like no. that? Oh my God, I have to go now. Just $5, like that? $5,000. But you could just do it like that? Like, That's what yeah. you did? It was crazy, it was fun. So tell me something, working alongside models like Patty Hansen, I'm thinking that you're all friends or you work together, but at the end of the day, it's like a group of girls that are all doing really well. Was there ever any, like, any bitchiness or like, I don't know, backstabbing stuff like that behind? Or, and, 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 and friendliness as well, all of it. Like, right. like how so did that there, work out? So there really wasn't though. I mean, with the blonde girls, like Kim Kelly and myself, they were, we were actually called the Yum Yum Girls. I think Carrie named us the Yum Yum Girls. Oh, really? Yeah, for, yeah. But it really wasn't. It really wasn't. There, there's only one girl that said to me, um, she said, can you just give one of us a cover? Can you just like, is it our turn now? And I, I said to her, I just have no say over who gets on a cover. I mean, if they of think course. it. That, that was only one time. But most of us were just like, hey, you know, whatever. Really nice. 
So can we talk about Gia just for a quick second? Sure. So I know you worked alongside Gia. You were talking to me earlier about how, how did that work, by the way? Well, why is it that you worked with Gia a lot? Okay, so I'm blonde, she's brunette, and we did the collections for Vogue a lot okay. together. Um, went to Paris on one time that I remember. And so what I remember about Gia, perfectly lovely, never mean or anything, but she never really, she always kept to herself. Um, she always maybe didn't show up at the time of the sitting or stuff, but at, you know, at the same time, I was. Did you always show up, by the way? I know exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did I, you? No, I mean, I wasn't exactly an angel, so I can't really say that. Um, well, there was there's one sitting I was booked for, Virginia Slims. Now that was huge. Cigarettes. That's cigarettes, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, they don't even do that advertising anymore. You can't advertise for cigarettes now, I don't think. No, but they Sorry. paid you a lot of money. Oh really? And I was booked two days in a row. So the first day, Nancy decides to party the night before. Oh, Nancy did. Okay, I like, I, like the, I like the way you refer to that. Nancy decided. And I don't show up the first day. I don't show. You up didn't the, show up the first day. No, I said I got hit by a bus. R really? Oh no, I didn't. No, wait, wait, wait. It gets okay, better. Okay, okay. So I show up to the studio with Jacques Melanion, who's a very good friend of mine now, and he looked. No, I showed up the second day. I had to pay for everybody on the first day. I had to pay ten thousand dollars. Oh, you had to pay for Not the, the fact that up. you messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I okay. had to do a couple of those. Oh. And he just looked at me and he was like, "I'm gonna kill you." Showed up the second day. Who does that? Normally, you show up the first day. Maybe you don't show up the second yeah, day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you don't. So anyway, so back to Gia. So we all weren't exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. It was a different time, right? Yeah. Was it hard to see what she was doing to herself? Because obviously, um, I mean, did you, people know what was going on, right? They knew what was yeah. going on. Yeah. Was it hard to watch that with someone that you're working with all the time, like? Or... Well, did I really grasp what she was doing? Right. I mean, you know, I was doing my thing. She right. was doing her thing. Her thing was different. Not a lot of people did what she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. Was doing. It was, we it was were all doing, you know, coke. So, yeah, it was. It was a cocaine thing. Yeah, right? it was. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was... She went more dark. She was darker. She went dark. Okay. And so, was it evident? Yes. Because of the mood, you okay, know, okay. Um, track marks and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I had a question for you about that as well. I've heard the photographers would shoot her with her arms behind her back. Yeah. Is that... Because well, of track marks? Well, they kind of had to, yeah. It yeah. was that bad? Oh, yeah. yeah. But the face was everything. The face was gorgeous. Yeah. Face was gorgeous, did, yeah. did you see this happen from the beginning? I mean, from when she started like t developing on like was well, she like that from the I'm beginning? I'm a kid too. You know, I was yeah, on my own thing. I, I don't care about Gia. You know, I'm no, curious. I know that. You I'm know just what I'm curious, saying? No, but like... we all we were all in the same scene, right? So we all you, you all you all probably heard what was going on. Of course, things like that. of course. But you know, I had my own things too, so, so it wasn't exactly great. On top of all your success of being one of like really one of the world's first supermodels mm -hmm. back in the late 70s early 80s there was so much excess back then like just so much like uh, indulgence and excess you've got money coming through you're a 20 year old mm -hmm. girl all this stuff there was a dark side to it as well and um whether that's drugs or anorexia and stuff etc please share so the the for me the anorexia started probably in high school and now, Nothing even to do with modeling. Well, I'm getting there. Oh, sorry, get, sorry, I'm sorry, get sorry. There. So it started, okay. I was anorexic in, in high school, um, and then I went into college and became bulimic and anorexic. So for what reason, don't ask me why. I have no idea. So then when I was discovered as a model, we came to New York and we discovered cocaine. So of course. this is easy. So I, I cured the anorexic bulimic. I didn't do that anymore. But you know, then you went to the cocaine. So that was sort of your, although I never had trouble with my weight, it was just, you know, you got into it, it was cool, you liked it. And yeah, yeah, you liked it. Was it was bad, super bad. Okay, Yeah. okay, okay. So I remember one time going home for Thanksgiving and I was really skinny and I was really yellow. And my, my mother took one look at me and she said, you know what, you're not going back to New York unless you get it together. Did you, so, so she knew what was going on your mother? Oh, yeah. How was that, by the way, with your family? Like, were they aware of this going on because you told them or because they could just know? Oh, or? no, they just looked at me. Now my little sister used to go through my bag and find things and 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah, no, wow. it was bad. Wow, 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 wow. But so that's the other interesting thing about growing up. I have four sister, three sisters and several brothers. Now, it was very hard for my sisters to see their sister on the cover of a magazine, and I'm getting all the... Yeah, 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 for sure. ...the praise, and, you know, so what about me, Mom, you know? So to this day, we still talk about it. Was it difficult for them to see their sister on the cover? It was cool, but it was so hard for them, you know? Course, There's their sure. sister doing all this stuff. Now they've come to grips with it and we're really cool about it. But it wasn't fun. But it's, um, taken, a, it's taken a while for that even to happen, like for them to get grips with it. Like. Yeah, for sure. So Studio 54, I can't even imagine how that was. But obviously yeah. I know that you were a regular there. Yes. Can we please talk about that a little bit? Steve Rubell, Ian Schrager, yeah. you, them. Even walking through the door. Did the doors just open up to you when you walked by? Yeah. No, oh, they did. Because you fancy I, one. Tell me. <laughs> no. Because they knew they knew who was who at the time, yeah. who was on all the magazines. So those guys knew. Okay, so so then yes, it's automatic in. You're automatic in. I was with Jeff Aquilon at the time, who was a pretty hot guy, and Steve Rubell was crazy good. I mean, there were the bowels of Studio Fifty Four that you, nobody would even imagine what was down there. Everybody Everyone says it's crazy. Studio Fifty Four was crazy, but I'm thinking to myself. I'm crazy and I do some crazy shit like and I've yeah. done some crazy stuff but they're like you don't have any idea but I'm like how different could it be it's music sex drugs there are things that I've done like I'm just like you know it's well probably yeah things that you've done but you're in an open city you're in a you're in a club and there were special people who were only allowed downstairs which I was down a few times there so it was it was amazing it was dancing fun fun poppers you know oh, oh really Diana poppers Ross. as well oh my god amazing <laughs> your story's been really great and the thing is since your prime time as being like a, one of the original supermodels which you really are what has happened uh since your prime like what has happened after all of that the cocaine the great covers you having a great career money blah 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 blah. what have you done i mean what what, I know, what have you done what has developed since then Okay, so just to go back to the, you know, the drug stuff. So I did. Oh yeah, sorry, to, sorry, no, no, sorry, no, sorry. No, no, okay, so no, I, so I did have to go through two rehabs. You know, it wasn't okay. an, it wasn't an easy out. So, uh, as a matter of fact, my mom brought me to the first one. She took years, you to it. Yeah, and then the second time I went, I had uh, I was I went myself. So. So that was hard stuff to get over. So then I left uh, New York, and then I went on to become a. I went and moved home with my son, and then I, I needed something to do. I wasn't modeling anymore, so I went to culinary school and became a chef. Oh wow! Yeah, so I was a chef for ten years. Um, then I became a personal trainer because I had to, you know, after making, you know, five thousand dollars a day to eight dollars an hour, it's blue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, so I, I had that. to figure it out. So then I became a personal trainer as well. So I was a personal trainer and a chef at the same time. Went on to become a fitness director, and now from that job, I'm an entrepreneur. I have my own business now. Did you miss it? Uh, no. Would you would you <laughs> would you repeat it? No. No. Absolutely not. Would you have regrets? Um, I just have regrets for the probably the amount of drugs I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. About the money you spent on drugs. Yeah, but thankfully I saved a lot of that. Smart girl. That's yeah, what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. Oh my God, Nancy, lovely. Mwah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>